Um, I think holiday styling could be some of the most fun things that we might have to look forward to this year. I know there's not a lot of parties happening, but I thought, you know, it, it's a good time to maybe take that extra few minutes just to give that extra little touch to our guests here. Maybe they're going to a family gathering um, or having a Zoom party. You never know in this day all the fun things that people are doing to be creative. So I have a handful of things I want to share with you today. And I always really love to think of styling like the perfect finish um, just like you would wrap a gift this time of the year and you want it to be perfect or even for a dinner that maybe you're serving to your family and you set the table beautifully it's all about the presentation and when we look at the cut or the color that we just beautifully created why not put that perfect finish on it to give it that showcase that it needs so while adding the finishes to a painting might appear insignificant, it is much harder than one might suppose. And my only thought to that really is, um, you know, we sometimes get so busy in the salon that we forget to put those final little touches on it because we, you know, get rushed at the very end or next guest is waiting. And it's those little things that don't mean a lot. They mean absolutely everything. So today I want to share with you some holiday glam waves. I want to share with you just some fun little tricks and techniques that you can use. Some fun things maybe with some ribbon or some embellishments that you can use to create some fun holiday styles for your guests. Um, whether they're going to a big party or just having a quiet you know, time with their family. And with that... Let's flip to the next page. Um, right now, you know, stylers are a wonderful thing to be able to share with our guests, whether they're going for low maintenance or they're going for um, a really more elegant look. They are so important to be able to create each and every style that we create. They create memory, they create shape, they create texture. And so we wanna always make sure that we're sharing those core stylers that will be able to give that perfect look for your guests. So today I'm gonna to be working with um, our blue styling line. I'm gonna take you through some hot tips of things that I like to work with within updos or within finishing. And some of my favorites for working through a blowout would be reflect uh, styling gel or bliss smoothing cream. I love taffy whip for creating some really bouncy texture and uh, jump mousse for creating some beautiful lift. Of course we have crave that is a that customizable hold and we then have all of our finishing stylers that we can work with. When we take a look at where they fall into line, we can be able to create with wet styling, we can be able to create with dry styling, and we have our hold products and our prep products. So I'm going to take you through some of my favorites today and just share with you where I like to use them, um, what my best you know thought there is. And one thing I wanted to take you through is to share a little bit about layering blowout. I know that everybody is getting their hands on blowout for the first time. Uh, our guests maybe are getting it, their hands on it for the first time. And they're like, how do I use this? What's the best way to work with it? So I thought I would take you through the general layering process with it. And so of course, the first thing that we want to do is prepare the hair for styling. So we work with our blowout shampoo and conditioner and even when we're just creating some beautiful holiday styling this will be fantastic time to be able to showcase the new blowout shampoo and conditioner as you'll be able to share with them that it will help to start preparing the hair for styling and creating that long lasting finish the next thing that we want to do is we want to create um, that detangling we want to add moisture where needed I love the Basu Mist for layering over that and underneath my primer, but you can choose, of course, Protein Cream or Awaken Mist is a great one too, but for providing that moisture. Then we start working with our primer. Now the primer is what really starts to set in the style memory, and you kind of want to sandwich it in between that and your stylers, and then as you start to blow it out, you'll use it again when the hair is about 80%, 75 to 80% dry. That way it still can absorb 
the, the primer and then still be able to um, help work with additional memory. Now you can choose any of your favorite surface stylers to work with this, but you definitely want to make sure that you layer those styling products over the top of the primer because the primer is really helping those styling products to adhere and to work even better. Helps it to dry quicker and then by taking that 75% dry and adding the primer in before we round brush really just helps that quick dry, that quick set, um, the quick style memory. When we're finished, we have the dry oil spray and the texture spray. Now you'll see me use these a little bit today within our holiday styling, but one of the things I wanted to share here is that you could use one or the, you know either one first. I think it just depends on what kind of style you like. I like to be more specific where I put my texture paste, so I'll usually work with my dry oil spray first. In fact, what I love to do with it is I love to be able to um, take the dry oil spray right at the very end of my blowout and spray it onto my hair right at that final turn of the brush as it's cooling down. And I also love to use it at night before I go to bed because that really helps to protect it at night. Now the texture spray could go on first if you prefer more of the texture all over um, and then finish with your dry oil spray or you can use the dry oil spray first and then use your texture spray in specific spots like I do just to create the volume at the root area. So it just depends on which way you want to go. You can finish it with your favorite surface hairspray um, as well as the Trinity Dry Shampoo is so important because this should be going on to your guest hair right after you've blown the hair out, right around the hairline and right before um, they go to bed at night and every time then every day they're following. So the biggest key difference here between the texture spray and dry oil or the dry shampoo and dry oil spray or why you would need both is because this helps to refresh the scalp this is refreshing the hair. So we use this every day following. So what I like to do is at nighttime, I'll mist my scalp with my dry shampoo, my dry oil spray on my ends, and then I work with them again in the morning to help keep rebooting my style in the morning. You guys through is some iron work and then also some uh, glamour waves. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I created these beautiful waves. And one of the things that's really important is as we're working with our iron work, I'm working with just a wand. Most of the styles I did, I used my wand. And what I love about this is I can really create some different looks. I can work with a flat wrap or a twisted wrap. The flat wrap is going to give me more of that S pattern wave where my twist wrap is going to give me more of a um, undulated finish as well. Um, so with that I can really be able to kind of get more twist out of it so it's more spirally but still a nice S pattern. So I'm just going to take one of these down so I can show you. When I worked with this what I did was a what we call a flat wrap and my iron is always going to face the direction I want the curl to fall. So for instance if I want it to fall towards the face I would make sure that the tip of the iron is facing that direction so it drops that way. It becomes really hard if I want it to fall um, the opposite direction, for instance, and I have to drop it backwards, it doesn't work quite as well. So a clamp iron would be the opposite. So we take the hair right over the top and we let it wrap around completely flat. Now, if I wanted to add some of that extra undulation with it, I could take that and I would wrap it with my palm up first and then as I'm twisting my palm's going to be down. As I twist again it's going to be actually moving and twisting as I go around that iron. So it's just going to get more of a twisted undulation. Now sometimes what I like to do is actually work with a flat wrap 
and then twist at the very end so that I get a little bit of a variation of both. So with my mannequin head here, I actually went just about down the middle and I worked with everything to the left and to the right so I could get some good direction. And we'll start here down at the very bottom. So the first thing I wanna do is work with each section by itself. So we have our contour brush here that I'm working with and I'm going to be working a lot with my dry oil spray. So I'll go ahead and mix this on. And Elle, I promise I'll get to your question too. So um, we'll take some time after this to do the chat box. So with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and start to brush that through. And I wanna really create some nice glamour waves. Now with this, we're gonna choose our Theory Spray is going to be the one that I'm going to choose to work with. And as I start to kind of push this into its wave, I'm going to grab my TK2 comb. And I will give a little bit of back comb to this. Um, one of the things I'll choose here that's really great to work with is my airlift. So as that hair is really pretty slippery, I need to create a little bit of grip to it. So I'm just gonna back her up just a, a smidge. And so we're gonna go ahead and just mist or puff that into, and then just give a little bit of back combing into that nape area, just to help kind of build them together. Now you can start to see they're coming together a little bit more. So as we start to build that undulation, we wanna start working to be able to move that back and forth. Now the back side, this very bottom one was done all in the same direction. And then I started to switch off. So with that, I'm gonna work this first wave all together. Now I'm using my Shine Wax. This is a great prep for being able to um, really help to give that shine to the hair with the very light weight wax, but it's also protecting the hair as I'm touching it. So every single time I go in and I start touching the hair, my hands are like big old sponges and they just start soaking everything up. So we'll go ahead and we're just gonna push that wave to the right and then as I get to the bottom we want to push the hair to the left and then we're going to go ahead and push it I don't know if you can see this because it's all the way down at the bottom but we're going to go ahead and push up and then we're going to push up to the other side. So you're gonna start to see some really pretty expansion in here as well. And if you ever want to really add some extra definition, just taking a little bit of the, the theory spray and then I'll take the can and just kind of push that up into that finish because that really helps to give like a, a nice smoothness to it. And then that way, when I go to take the next pieces down, now I can really start to layer these over the top. So it becomes a little bit of a process to work with these. Now this one is going the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and work with my dry oil spray. And I'm gonna go ahead and work to brush that through. Now I wanna to start to add some grip to it. So I'll start with my Theory Firm and then I work in with my Airlift. So just a little bit of back combing to the back. And as I turn, and work, you can start to see the pattern and they should start to fall in to the next one. So you want that to kind of be a deliberate push up to the back 
And when you start to connect these on the opposite side, so let's do our second side first before we really start putting them together. So a little bit of the dry oil spray. You can use your TK2 comb here or use your contour brush. And as you can see that wave now works the opposite direction. So when I start to work with my airlift, add a little bit of grip and now I'll start to push my back combing in. I'm using about every two, one to two inches or so. So I'm not, um, I'm not putting a ton of back combing in, but when I do it, it's deliberate. I don't want to uh, just sit and back comb it, but make sure that you take that center and connect them so that you get a nice seamless look, even though they're gonna go to the different directions because otherwise you're gonna have a split all down the middle and we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and take that first side. I've got my shine wax on my hands and we're gonna start to push into the wave. So use your thumb and just kind of push up into the wave push up into the wave. If you start to see them splitting, that's a good place to add in either your um, airlift or you can add in your push powder. And with that, we'll just tap that in because the push powder will help to add some grip that will help to put those two together. So as I start to push into that wave, and now as I start to get into the next one, we push the opposite direction. We push opposite direction. And remember, if you would like to add a little more definition, use the can to be able to work through this. So we'll put a little bit of push powder in. You can use the airlift. I love the airlift for finer textures because the airlift helps to expand in the hair and make it feel a bit thicker. Where the push powder um, does it does make it feel thicker too, but it also has more grit. So if that hair is really slippery, that's where I like that one. So now I start to read the wave again, and we've started to work with that back combing just right in the middle, so that we can go ahead and help them to stay. We're going to push up into the wave, push up. And this one's still a little bit slippery. So I'll add in my theory, and as I start to push, we're going to go ahead and push up into the wave. So you always want to push into the direction or push up into the curve of the wave. So as you start to do that, you're going to start to see that pattern set even more. So these have gone the opposite direction. I did that on purpose so that the hair can move to the front. Um, with that, we're gonna do a couple of different types of pushing with this. So I don't, I'm not necessarily looking for a finger wave. I'm just looking for that um, movement to be able to really build the volume within the hair. So we're gonna do one more section and I'm gonna move on to, so I'll look at the chat box and then I'll look on, move on to some other little tricks. So again, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our dry oil spray. So I love this too. Um, when your guests are starting to work with their dry oil spray, if they're one that really just is low maintenance, I, I can't tell you how well the, the blowout system works. I'm a fine haired person and I normally only get maybe two days out of my blowout and then it just looks like stringy hair again. And it's just because my hair doesn't have the moisture on the inside that it really needs to be able to withhold and withstand the longevity. So when I use blowout, my hair actually feels bouncy and hydrated even into day two, 
day three, day four, and now I'm getting four and five days out of my blowout. So it's been wonderful to be able to not um, have that, especially um, I just had some surgery that I couldn't shower for a while. So it was really nice not to have to worry about washing my hair uh, so often. And when we use the dry oil spray on a daily, it really helps to extend the life of that blowout. So that's kind of your, uh, your insurance piece. I would say that that one's really even more important than people realize because what happens is as we put a style into the hair, the moisture that gets depleted out of the cortex is what causes a um, style to drop. So when we use the blowout dry oil spray, we use the, the primer, all of that sets in that cannabis sativa seed oil um, to be able to keep that moisture where we need so that the style lasts. It's the moisture that helps that uh, keeps that longevity. So with this, we're going to do a little bit of some different movements within the hair. So again, they're going opposite directions, which is totally fine. I love to not work all in the same direction. I'm very much a uh, oh, I'm very much a a directional type stylist, and I love a lot of intermixed movement. So with that, uh, it really helps to give me a lot of different styles. So we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna start first by adding that little bit of back combing to the back. So we're gonna start with our airlift up at the top because I really wanna give some nice fullness. And we've used our dry oil spray just for insurance, I'll do it again. That's gonna help keep that, um, like I said, I just love it at nighttime right before I go to bed and I'll give my hair a really good brushing. And then that morning, it's like, man, it's just awesome to be able to um, be able to work to give me that longevity that I need. So we're gonna go ahead and start here with our TK2 comb. I'm using the fine side of the teeth. And what I'm doing is just a deliberate push. So I'm working about an inch in and just really pushing that hair so that I don't just create a lot of messy ratting to the hair. Now in here we've got our mixed undulation so we're going to go ahead and start working um, with the wave and I'm just going to keep pushing up into it until I start to see the next one come in and I'll go ahead and just push now the cool thing is, is what I want to do is then start taking the hair and kind of letting it spring both directions. So as I'm picking up, I don't hope you can see this, but as I'm picking this up, I'm pulling with one hand and I'm pulling with the other at the bottom. So it's like a bow tie almost. If you take two opposite sides and we're just pulling and separating. So as I start to work those away from each other, we give that beautiful full separation. So we'll do the same thing here on this opposite side. So just like you would pinch and kind of pull those up, now you can really see how we can start to get some of that fullness. So. I'm going to complete this one offset and I'll make sure to post some pictures along with that video. Um, but this can really just give you that beautiful fullness. Now, once I have this completed, I want to come in and really start to set with my theory. And I like to put the dry oil spray over the top because that's really going to help set in the style. And then if I really want that extra, I'll go ahead and mist a little bit of my shine spray on. And I love this one because it's lightweight. It gives the hair the shine I want uh, without the weight of it. So with this, we're gonna move into a more of a half up and half down. Now this one, when I curled it, I used more of a um, long 
curl and then I worked in different directions. So some of them were curled up and some of them were curled under. So I'm gonna show you that in just a quick second, but I do wanna make sure that we address the chat box. Um, and I'll get, let's see. Elle's question is, do you have any tips on selling blowout? Reasons why is because it's a little bit more expensive than the other surface families. And I think when we help our guests to see the value of the ingredients that are inside, that makes a big difference in letting them know that that's CBD, uh, or excuse me, cannabis sativa seed oil is what's really helping to give the moisture on the inside of the hair. So it's long-term protection and their style will last and last and last. And because of the fact that like, for instance, the primer is only being used really when we blow out. So that very first part of it is uh, protecting the hair as we start to prepare the hair. And so that one will last you quite a while. The other two, uh, the texture spray and the dry oil spray, I think are personal pieces. So for me, I tend to use way more of the dry oil spray than I do the texture spray. The texture spray, I see a lot more people using it because they love that feel of that light texture. And so discover what your um, guest needs are and what their preferences are, and it'll help you direct them to which one they're gonna use more. And yeah, the long-term protection is I think the, the really key element because that's what's going to keep them, that style lasting and lasting and lasting. And it'll help them use less on other things as well because they're not gonna be using as, their styling products as much because they're not gonna be blow drying as often. And why airlift over texture spray? Um, texture spray is just definitely lighter. And so you could absolutely use it for a lot of these techniques. The airlift is actually a tapioca starch that expands in the hair and gives us a more of a thicker feel to the hair. So I love that one for my fine haired guests where they really want that added thickness to the hair, where texture spray gives me the texture I need and the volume, but it won't necessarily give me that thickness. So you ideally you could use both um, depending on which order they use them. So, all right. So let's take a look at how we created these uh, iron works. So I'm using kind of diagonal sections here because as this front section is really moving to the back, I wanted to be able to just give it some soft texture. So I haven't combed through anything yet. I'm using my theory today for my thermal protection. And a good thing to know is, you know, when your guests are looking for things that have thermal protection in it, let them know that everything they use with surface is going to give them that thermal protection. So they're always protecting the hair as they're working. So we'll start here by, again, the iron is facing the direction I want it to go. So I want everything to flow to the back. And so I'm gonna start, you'll notice this one is an underneath. So this one, I'm working over the top. And I love to mix these because I feel that it really gives the hair uh, some different texture. And as you kind of stretch it across the iron, that's what gives it more of that beachier, softer texture to the hair. And so usually what I'll do is I'll mix it with the theory. And theory gives beautiful texture all on its own just nice soft texture. So this one here, it's still working to the back, so everything is moving backward. And then I'm just wrapping and twisting. So see how my hand is moving? It's gonna be facing up at the bottom and it's facing down at the top. Now, a good beachy wave is really just taking the full use of your iron, stretching that curl out. So if you have it really close together, it's gonna create more of a close together curl. If you space it out, it's gonna create more of a stretched pattern. And then the last one we're gonna go ahead and create. I want this one to go up as I did the other one. We're still twisting. I'm spreading them out so we get more of that stretched wave. And 
Ta-da. So we've got our, our curls set in. Now let's create our half up and half down. So the first thing I want to do is start to really just brush through this texture. Now you'll notice through the crown area or that black zone, when I did my curls, I actually alternated one this way and then one this way. So they are alternating back and forth across the top. And again, I love that when I want that really nice separated texture. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to take our dry oil spray and we're going to go ahead and we're going to work to brush some of that through. So this will give it the long-term protection it needs. So if I was to take and continually brushing out um, the style, so I used some swirl sea salt spray to be able to help create the texture from wet. That's where I got that start. And then I used jump up at the root area. And what I love about that is it gives me nice volume. It gives me that sea salt beachy texture that I'm looking for. But then adding in the blowout helps to create the longevity. So what I usually do, if you've ever noticed, no matter you know how well you prepare the hair in styling, sometimes when you start brushing through it, you lose curl or as you're touching it. So some things to be aware of is, again, Always make sure that your hands are protected when you're working on your guest hair. So I love either my basu oil uh, or I love to use my shine wax. So I always make sure that my hands are prepared. From here, we're going to go ahead and that way as I'm touching it, I'm not stealing away the moisture. But what you'll notice is that when you use blowout on your brushing, it's going to really help create that longevity. So now I can help to reboot that style. And as I'm starting to pull it away, it just gets bouncier and bouncier. So I don't lose any of what I created. And what we're going to do is in the back side area, we're going to go ahead and start just by taking this crown area. And I want to create a little bit of texture in the crown just by adding some of our push powder. So we're going to go ahead and tap this in and I'm just sprinkling it in at the very top so it's just a couple of the holes are open. I don't really want a ton in here. A um, little bit goes a long way and then we're going to work with a W push so or, or a three finger push and I just take three fingers and we just go in once, twice, pushing it down and, and L knows me way too well she know I'd be singing right now um, from all of our hair shows and you know three times a lady gotta have that in there um, but we're gonna go ahead and just push that out and create a little bit of a bump right in the middle here so as I do that we're gonna go ahead and secure with an elastic and we're gonna then create some just really fun texture and then we'll embellish it a bit so the first thing first, I'm going to go ahead and just take that and push it up just by easiest bump you'll ever create. Just take your two pieces, kind of stretch it up and give a push. And if you want, then go ahead and take your pin and secure that in place. So I like to wiggle the pin go in one direction and come back the other way. And you can use two or three pins here just to make it as secure as you need to. So we've got our bump. And now we wanna work around the front. So we're gonna go ahead and start to drop a few pieces as we go. I'm gonna work on a diagonal placement. And we're gonna go ahead and take our first one. I'm just using my fingers. Again, you can add some back combing in here. The dry oil spray is protecting the hair while I'm working. We have the swirl sea salt spray that gave us some nice texture. And the first one here, I'm just going to go ahead and take a couple of turns of the elastic. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and add in the next one. Now I like to drop a few pieces as I go. So when I drop, I'll usually go right at the ridge line, the temple, and then right in front of the ear. Those are usually the um, where I like to focus. So you've got like that temple eye line and then your little corner there. So I always pay attention to that as I'm moving forward. So we're going to go ahead and take up our next slice underneath. And we're going to go ahead and split it. And we're going to work it right over the top because we want to cover up that elastic. We're going to go ahead and take our elastic and then just to create some fun embellishment with it we're going to take it and topsy tail it so you're going from the top to the back and you're going to take and separate kind of push up and pull those edges up a little bit and then with the first one the same thing you're just going to pull those edges up you're not going to turn it under because we otherwise we'll have a split in the front but you want to kind of create that little bit of texture. You can use your taffy wax spray at the end uh, to be able to really kind of finish and give some extra bounce to this. But as we're going, we'll start working through this part first. So we're going to go ahead and take the next one down. I'm just going to drop a piece right here at that front. We're going to go ahead and take our slice and split it that's the slice behind. And then we set it over the top of the ponytail because I want this to stay delicate. Otherwise I would go ahead and I would do it. I would actually add it to it. But we want it to kind of stay um, soft and delicate. So we're gonna keep it right over the top. We're gonna topsy tail it through. We're going to go ahead and separate and kind of pull up and then we're just going to open that up a little bit. Now if you want to add in some texture spray here or your airlift or your push powder to give a little bit of extra texture, you can absolutely do that. And then we take the next one just back behind it. Actually, I've already gotten to the back of the ear. So now what we want to do is we want to take just a small piece from out on either side. So it's kind of like a backwards band braid. Usually you go underneath. So we're gonna do this one on top here and we're gonna then topsy tail it. So we're gonna do maybe two more just to start circling around the back side. So pull up your edges, kind of push that up. And then you're gonna do one more here. So there's one on each side. We're gonna go ahead and create the elastic. And we'll go ahead and topsy tail it. So topsy tail through, pull up your edges a little bit. Make sure, I can feel my hands are getting dry, so I wanna make sure that I take care of that. I'm using my shine wax. I also love this shine wax whenever you've got the guest that maybe has just those little bit of flyaways right at the part line and you want to buff them out. Um, it works really, really well. And I can tell just by where my elastic is in the back here, I need one more ponytail in order to make this work. So I'm going to go ahead and take one more over the top. We're going to go ahead and secure this with an elastic. We're going to topsy tail it. And we're going to go ahead and pull those edges up. We're going to cinch at the bottom. And then we can go ahead and just tuck that one in on the opposite side. And then to complete this, we would be doing the other side of this which I'm gonna do and then put some, uh, post some pictures for you. But what I wanted to show you is where we can really start to embellish them. So just like here, I've got some little poinsettias. You can add that in, which is really great for not only your social media, but um, so if you're posting pictures of updos, dressing them a little bit can give you that really nice finish. 
and then being able to give your guests a little bit of extra fun just by having some little things on hand. And these are easy to find pieces that um, when you have them on hand, you can just add them in for embellishment. And here we're gonna use our Taffy Wax Spray down at the very bottom just for that final finish. Now you'll notice that it goes white and that's okay because we're just gonna mist, we're gonna melt by squeezing that in. And that's just gonna add a little bit more of that detailed texture with it. So with that, you guys, you get that beautiful texture, you get the little fun of the flip on the back and then that little nice bump on the opposite side. Now, this one is something just super simple. I was thinking kids here. I thought how, you know, we have all the little kids that come in this time of year and maybe they want a braid, maybe they want uh, some extra fun. So why not give them a little bit of a holiday spirit within it? So what I did is I took the ridges line, so across the sides, and they kind of came into a little point here and that's my top section and just created a braid. The sides right now are right behind the ear on both sides. And then I have just a simple ponytail on the very bottom. So when I braided it, I braided it really nice and tight. I used shaping wax because the shaping wax gives the hair a really nice uh, contouring. So when we use it, it melts in the hair very easily. It works with guar gum, so when I'm using it, um, we have that beautiful like contouring shape. And so I love that I'm gonna go ahead and pat it and squeeze it into the end of the hair to help give me that extra control. And now what I wanna do is the very first undulation up here, I just wanna kind of pick it up a little bit and not too much. And then the next one, I'm just gonna very lightly start to pull it out. The next one, we're gonna pull out a little bit more. The next one, we're gonna pull out a little bit more. And the very last one, we're gonna pull out even farther. So essentially what we're creating is the shape of a tree. So as you get to the bottom one, you want those to be the farthest out as you can. And then you're gonna come out a little bit more in the center very little and then almost nothing. So when you do this, you're gonna create this little effect of a Christmas tree. So I hope that you guys can see this. So it just gets wider as it gets to the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna secure this with an elastic so you can have some fun with this. And I bought these um, little beard lights that you would use for your male guests um, during the holiday time, maybe, as they're starting to work through some fun uh, after, after No Shave November. And we're going to dress it up a little bit. First, we're going to go ahead and take our first section uh, right over the top of the ear here. And we'll use that to create our band. Now, again, I like my taffy wax here because I can spray it on and I can really start to control it. And even after I touch it with my fingers, I'm not gonna um, cause any frizzing because it's just gonna help to really smooth it out. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this first one around and we'll just tuck it in with a pin at the back. And then we'll do the opposite side. And again, I'm just working, it didn't work out so well. So happens when I try to go too fast. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the opposite one. Just make sure that you land it under the tree piece. There's your finished ponytail. And then I found these great little, like I said, these great little beard lights. And They go. They're just little clip-ons. So how much fun is this? Little little clips that we can then decorate maybe for your little guests. Some of these have lights in them. I don't know. I thought they were just too much fun. 
You could put ribbon in here, but just think about the fun that you could have dressing that up for your little, for your little guests as well. Now the last thing I wanna share with you is a little bit of fun with ribbon. And so I wanted to do something fun that would be a little bit more avant-garde, a little bit more exciting, maybe something fun that you can have um, some fun with a guest who's going out to a fun party or if you're into doing your uh, photo shoots or things like that. But what I want to do is just take these soft waves. I left lots of texture in here because I want to build um, some nice volume into it. And so we'll use our texture spray to be able to add that additional texture, that explosion of volume in here. We're going to start in the crown area. So I just want to create a nice little ponytail here at the very crown area and I kind of want this to build out. So I need the texture, I need the volume, and I'm just using my hands because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want it to be smooth. I want it to be pretty full. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Theory hairspray or Theory firm here because this will give me really nice texture and hold. Now when we use the um, Theory firm or Theory even, the sugar starches that we use, the sugar fibers. Think of it like cotton candy. So when you are using the theory, it really helps to be able to create some um, beautiful additional volume. And I'm even going to just take this one more time and I'm going to go ahead and create kind of a, a loop up at the top because I don't really need it. Um, I just need enough so that I can put in my donuts. So I have here four donuts. I have different sizes. So this first one is going to go right over the top. But you need to get secured to the base. So when you're securing it, you want to grab the, the donut first, kind of on the outside, and then flip it under and make sure that you connect it at the scalp area. So I'm going to do a couple more here. I usually like to use at least four pins for this. Um, pretty much north, south, east, west is where I look. And I have, I think I lost one of my little donuts, but we'll figure it out. So I've got some different sizes. They come in different colors. I'm not too concerned about whether or not um, they match because we'll be covering them up but you're gonna connect them the same way you connected the first one. So you're gonna go ahead and take your pin and weave to grab some of the netting and then flip it and tuck it back up. And again, you need at least four of these in order for it to stay really well. And I don't want the same, now this one is the same size, but I did this because I wanna create, um, I have a littler one up at the top, but I want to create some height. But I seem to have dropped my little one somewhere. I'm not sure where it went. So we're going to just go ahead and work with these three. And we'll use that top bow. So make sure there's a little bit of a loop up at the top. And now I've got this nice shape and you'll be able to tell if it's going to be secure or not. So make sure that this is nice and secure because that's going to be your, your base. Now I want four triangles to work with. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be up at the very front. So we'll go ahead and take from the ridge line back and create kind of an upward movement or an upward diagonal. on both sides so that you get that nice front. Oh no, we got tangles. I'm just separating with my hands again because I don't want to have a whole lot of um, smoothness to it. It needs texture, it needs to build. So we're gonna be building with our product as we go. I'm just looking for to get this side out of the way. 
And I do want to create some back combing. So we're going to use our push powder down at the base. And when I use this, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to back comb deliberately down through the back. Now I am going all the way up at the top, but notice that when I do this, I'm just pushing the hair every couple of inches I'm pushing. So I'm not going to actually um, create anything that is going to be stiff or like a real heavy uh, webbing. I just want something nice and soft. So what I want to do here is I'm going to mist in my Theory Firm. Now I worked with Blowout when I did this. So we used Reflect Gel on my base and then I used the Blowout system with it. So as I start working with it, you'll notice that it's going to be rather bouncy. So as long as my hands are well prepped with my sh uh, Shine Wax, I'm just going to go ahead and pull some of these edges down a little bit. See how they get nice and bouncy? That's from the blowout. So when I do this, I'm going to find where that top is, right up at the very top. And I'm going to go ahead and place and pinch my hands right at the height of the donut. So when I start to place my elastic in, it's right at that very same height. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create another loop just at that front. So I want the tail to kind of be loose, that can hang, but I want that to be about the same height as the last loop. And she's getting pretty tall here. Good thing I didn't put another one on there. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the back side. So we're going to find the point right into the nape area, right into the nape area. Now, like I guess this may not be something that your guests want to wear out, but at the same time, I think it's fun to be able, um, if you have some photo shoots that you're doing for the for the uh, holiday time, or you want to be able to just have some fun um, for your websites and so on. We're just gonna go ahead and tap our push powder in here. And we're gonna go ahead and just deliberately back home. Now I'm not too concerned about this underneath because it's pretty long and it's gonna be able to reach up at the top. So just give yourself a little bit of padding every couple of inches and just nice and soft. When you use your hands up at the top here, we're gonna go ahead and lift it right to where that is. Now you are gonna need some pins down at the bottom and I'll give you some pointers for that one. But what we're gonna do is take our elastic and create another small, loop. This one won't have a whole lot because of the length coming all the way to the top, but we'll get a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and bring that loop up. So now I've got three loops up at the top. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing with the two sides. So first we'll do our right side. We're using our push powder. And just a little bit of tapping. You don't want to open this all the way. It's super easy to get that to be a lot of extra. And then we're just going to about every inch push that up. And we're going to use our hands. And we're going to go ahead and push to the top. Now the best part about this is when I get all these elastics in here, I can actually just take and pin these easily to the top by the um, donuts. So as you can see, we're gonna build some fun height and we're gonna then decorate it. We'll do the same on the last side. I'm doing this quickly so that you guys can get the final finish and I will dress it up for you and we'll post some fun pictures this week. So the last one, again, we're going to go ahead and just push, push, push. As I start to bring this up to the top, we're just using our hands so that when I go ahead and mist 
my theory, and as my blowout is working for me, I can just start to push and kind of pull these edges out a little bit. We're going to go ahead and create, now this one got a little bit too messy up at the top, so I just, I want to make sure I have a little texture and curl in here. So I'm just using the uh, vertical part of my comb rather than trying to comb it with all the teeth. Just up at the very top, use the parting tooth just to separate it a little bit. We're going to go ahead and place in our elastic. Remember, I'm going to the top of where that donut is, and I'm also making sure that I'm directing this to the back. So everything is going in the direction that I want it to go. There's my loop. And we're going to use that in just a bit. So what I want to do first is if you want the texture to be out and a little bit tousled, you can leave that. If you want, you can tuck it underneath for extra padding. Just depends on what you want to create. And so what we'll do is we'll start in the back. We're going to go ahead and take a good big pin for this because then I can go ahead and make sure it's going to go through all of these. And so just one of those nice big pins. And then we're going to go ahead and take the next one. We'll go ahead and pop that one right down through the middle. And I was inspired, I think, by uh, Cindy Lou. You know, it's I heard the Grinch playing the other day. And so I feel like that was kind of that inspiration. And then we're going to go ahead and pull up this last one. And then you just want to make sure that your donut is covered. So at that point, just kind of peek around, make sure that if you need to move any of this over, you can here use, now that you've got your theory helping you to set it up, use your dry oil spray or your texture spray. I like the dry oil spray because if the hair is super dry, to begin with, when I use the dry oil spray, it will really help to kind of let that bounce come through. If the hair is really slippery, the texture spray is going to be your, your better friend. All right, so now we've got this kind of nice and covered all the way around. And we have some of these little tousled tails that we can use to decorate it as well. Again, just make sure that everything is kind of covered. And, and think about it, if somebody wanted something for real, um, you could have some fun with this just on a lower level. You could take just one donut in there and create uh, just a nice full updo up at the top. I see pictures of beehives floating back around. You never know when they might come back. And so then we're just going to go ahead and take our tails and kind of turn them a little bit make sure that they're where I want them. And then let's take a little bit of ribbon and we'll just wind them through these loops and just some fun up at the top to give it some color. A little bit of dressing for the holidays. You can take this around if you'd like it to be up more in the front or rather in the back. But I love to be able to even just kind of pull them together and give that a little bit of a, a dress. So you can twirl those around wherever you like. Maybe you feed them through and wind them around so that they're kind of looped through, I don't know. And then the best part is when I take this down to the, to the top, we want to do a little bit of separation. So with that, we're going to go ahead and just take a little bit of that dry or taffy wax, and we're going to do what we call the bow tie. And by doing the bow tie, what this means is I'm taking two parts of that loop and I'm just pulling them away from each other to create volume, to create texture. Um, that's where that little loop comes in to play because you don't want that to uh, disappear. 
So if you have that little bit of a loop down at the bottom, and just by taking and pulling these edges apart, we get some more texture throughout here. And you can use this then to be able to fill it. So it's a little tall, it's a little bit fun, a little bit crazy, but why not? It's the holidays and I thought it'd be fun to be able to create um, something a little bit more avant-garde because I think we all need a little bit of fun this holiday season. So with that, you guys, I just wanna share a couple little slides here.